Okay, so I ran into a little problem with my review this week, guys. I had it all filmed, all edited, and all set to go, and I lost it. Everything! Now, there is one hope. I was testing out one of Lena's mini magic mirrors, and I think I recorded it all. Let's find out. Please, please, don't be botched. Come on, mirror. It's time to watch. This is the penultimate Ever After's book, and the stakes have never been higher. The Snow Queen is on the attack. Families are being ambushed at home, and they're moving into EAS for their own safety. Rory's mother wants to pull her out of the Ever After School program. And there's a ball! What can I say about this series that I haven't said before? Let's find out! To put it simply, Shelby Bach never ceases to amaze me. I am not kidding. There are always two storylines in the Ever Afters books. One in the real world and one in the fairy realm. I don't know how Shelby does it, but she always manages to parallel these two storylines without it sounding too forced or obvious. Now, the real world doesn't just act as a bracket around Rory's fairy tale adventures. It's not that simple. Rory's real world, her parents, troubles at school, her dad's new marriage, is constantly butting into her fairy tale story. These two stories are constantly entwined, and it provides mind-blowing depth and development to Rory's character. Before I read The Ever Afters, I thought I knew what good character depth and development were. But no! The tale takes us into the Arctic, and we get to meet dwarves. Shelby makes interesting cultural additions to her dwarf civilization, and it helps make them feel unique and sets them apart from other generic dwarves and other stories. I am really looking forward to seeing these characters come back in the fourth book. I'm just not quite sure where they're going to be in the fourth book. The characters are getting older, and I have loved watching them grow and develop over the books and the years. With the series, I am always talking about the great character development that Shelby manages, and of Sorcery and Snow is no exception. Now in the 8th grade, things are starting to happen to our favorite triumvirate, romantic things. Now, I am not a huge fan of romance in middle grade novels, and this is because I personally think middle grade is a little too young for kids to start thinking seriously about dating. However, I loved the way Shelby handled this. It's very subtle. It's realistic. It's not head over heels. It's freaking adorable. It's heartwarming. It's awkward. It's beautiful. The feels! I totally shipped this. I'm not gonna say it because spoilers, but when you read this, you will know. Oh, you'll know. Chapter 7. I think it's my favorite part of the whole book. There is a huge aspect dealing with love and loss in here. This book hit me right in the gut, and while I love the other two books dearly, none of them affected me the way this book did. There is meaning here. There are implications. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm quite terrified of what's going to happen next. This story, the characters, the readers are not as safe as they used to be. This book crosses a line. Not necessarily in a bad way, but like I said, the stakes are higher. And I am begging you, Shelby, do not destroy my fangirl's heart with the fourth book. Pretty, pretty, please. Of Sorcery and Snow kicks it up to a new level. There's more character development as the kids are getting older. Sides are being drawn. There is love and loss, hope and despair, all with the fun and charming quality that makes Shelby's Ever After series my hard and fast favorite. And we only have one more book, people. <sighs> but I know the final installment is going to be epic. My only disappointment with this book is a minor spoiler. And that means hit the mute button until I give the thumbs up sign if you don't want to hear. And that's that we don't get to meet Rory's grandfather. I was really looking forward to this. In the first book, we found out that her grandfather was a character, and I wanted him to be in the story so badly. I have my fingers crossed that we'll get to learn more about him in the next book. Of Sorcery and Snow by Shelby Bach gets five stars and a special place on my favorites bookshelf. Uh, 
if you're interested, you can check out my reviews for the other books in this series. The M3 should have them up right here. Hey, mirror, mirror, don't be rude. Show them the links for books one and two.